You are watching Sammy, the interviewing toucan, made possible by the Indiana Young Readers Center. Hey, everybody, I'm Sammy, and I'm here today with John David Anderson, who goes by Dave. Is that right? That is correct, Sammy. Hi, Dave. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm great. I'm so excited to be talking to you. You're like one of our Indiana author stars. Well, I mean, I'm no John Green, but uh, I'll hey, do in a pinch. Do you, do you have a connection? Can, could you give me an interview with him? Uh, I do not, although my wife has gotten the occasion to hug him, uh, oh. which, she, which she never lets me forget. So that's, Wow. That's something, I've, yeah. I've heard that's pretty special. But gosh, we are not talking about him today. We are talking about you. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your connection to Indiana? Sure. Uh, my name is John David Anderson, as uh, you already know, and I am born and raised Hoosier um, in Indianapolis most of my life, except for a brief spent stint where I was at the University of Illinois, where I got to teach literature and writing for a few years. Um, I have been writing since I was 17 years old. That's when I wrote my first novel. It was terrible. I'm the only person who's ever read it. Uh, it was another 13 years and two college degrees and four jobs and blood, sweat and tears and all that usual stuff that you have to go through before I got my first book published. Um, it was called Stand Here Behavior and it was actually a young Hoosier Book Award nominee. Um, so from the moment that I first got published, I was recognized by my state, which is great. You know, it's really, it's really nice to be honored um, by the people that you grew up with, essentially. Uh, so yeah, telling stories for a long time uh, since I was three years old and started lying to my parents um, because, you know, stories have lots of power and one of the powers is to try and get you out of trouble. Uh, other than that, I have published 10 novels. Uh, I've probably written over 20, uh, which means they don't always end up um, silver and gold, you know, uh, but it doesn't matter because you write them because you love what you do. And I do love what I do. I think I have one of the best jobs in the world. And I love connecting with Indiana readers. Oh, I love all of that. So you said you've written like 20 novels. That's amazing to me. Um, have they all been written for a, for a youth audience? I think so. Um, I mean, at the start, I wasn't quite sure what my audience was. I knew that I wasn't writing for adults um, because I was an adult at the time and I found them boring. Uh, whereas kids, you know, had huge, robust imaginations and great senses of humor and would be willing to go on the kinds of journeys that I wanted to go on. And so I knew it was some basic age. And thankfully, I was starting to write at a time when you may have heard of Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah, heard of that guy. Yeah, he's not okay. from here, yeah. but you no, know. he's not. No, he's not. No, he's not a Hoosier. Uh, no. Harry. Um, but so that was really sort of solidifying what middle grade audiences were, uh, and all of a sudden, you know, the market was pretty well defined. Like now, I could write for kids between the ages of eight and thirteen. Uh, and I knew that's definitely my target audience. It's my sense of humor. It's about the age where I emotionally stopped maturing, uh, as my wife will probably tell you. Uh, and so it was just, it was an ideal fit. Um, yeah. That's great. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about your creative journey? Like, where are you now? Where do you hope to be someday? I've got two of your books here, um, posted and granted, and you've got one there, don't you? I do. Your new, your I, new my, book? Yeah, my latest book, One Last Shot. Um, and, and in some ways, actually, these three books that we have on display kind of says where I'm at in my creative journey, or at least in my evolution as an author, which is that I'm still very much, I feel like I'm a rookie. I feel like I'm still experimenting, uh, and I'm always trying new things. Um, granted, of course, is a fantasy novel about fairies and posted as a realistic fiction about bullying and the power of words. Uh, and One Last Shot is a sports novel. Um, and I basically sat down and said, you know, I want to write a sports novel. I've never done this before. Uh, let's challenge ourselves. Let's break out of the box a little bit. And then I thought, well, John David Anderson, the only problem with that is you're terrible at every sport, which is pretty much true. <laughs> so I had to think of like the one sport that I was halfway decent at and really enjoyed. And it turned out that was miniature golf. Ah, uh, miniature and, golf, not even like big person golf. golf. <laughs> no, it's miniature golf, uh, which can get really intense. Don't get me wrong. Uh, and at least it does in this book. Uh, 
Um, so this is my sports novel about miniature golf, but it's also about um, parents and children and their relationships and what happens when a parent's marriage starts to fall apart and the kid feels responsible. Uh, and it's about how a lot of times growing up, but even now as an adult, me too, we have voices inside of our head, obviously, um, that sort of narrate our life as we go on. It's called self-talk. Uh, and the main character in this book, Malcolm, he has a lot of voices inside of his head. And one of those voices, of course, is the voice of doubt. You know, it's that voice that's very anxious, that questions everything, um, that leads Malcolm to think that everything that he's doing is wrong. And so a lot of the novel is him trying to use miniature golf as a way to gain the confidence he needs to dispel those voices of doubt inside of his head. Wow, it sounds great. I, I really can't wait to get my wings on it. Um, I've read uh, Granted over here, which I really, really enjoyed. I loved all the flying, of course, and yeah, of the, course. you know, the modern fairy tale sort of. I mean, it's not really a fairy tale, but it's a modern tale about fairies, I suppose is the best way to put it. So, <laughs> I think it fits. Yes, absolutely. I really enjoyed that. Um, a couple other things. We've, we're in a pandemic right now, which is pretty, pretty wild. So how are you doing with that? Do you have any advice for people? Um, I mean, I have a lot of advice for young people because I've given this a lot of thought. And I think, you know, as an artist, obviously, and I, I'm, I'm extrapolating here, but I'm working under the assumption that every artist is working under the pressure to try and encapsulate this moment somehow in their art, yeah. right? Uh, to try and use their art as a way not only to cope with it, but to help other people cope with it as well. Uh, and so I'm still struggling with that. I'm still struggling with, you know, how do you write a novel now in a sort of pandemic post-COVID world? Does it look the same as the novel that I would have written last year or two years ago? Um, does it address the concerns of my readers, which obviously have shifted? Uh, but I think more important than that is thinking about, and not just obviously with the pandemic, but everything else that's going on uh, with the calls for social justice and change and all of that, uh, is to think about the, the power that young people have in their voices uh, and the power that their words have to change the world. And so as much as I'm concentrating on my art and what that's going to look like, I'm also trying to encourage kids to use their voices to express uh, their hopes and their fears and their dreams and their anxieties and all of the things that are going on with them emotionally with an eye to hopefully making the world better tomorrow and next year and 10 years from now. Um, because I think we're, we've got a generation that's coming up, a generation of young readers, but also a generation of young activists, a generation of young um, dancers and sculptors and painters and writers and engineers and uh, scientists and all so much potential. Um, and we're going to need it, right? Gosh. If we're going to get through this. Yeah. I just, that's such a beautiful, wonderful sentiment. I absolutely agree with you. There's so much hope coming up in the world, but it is sometimes hard to feel that hope when there is so much um, unfairness, you know, just still in our society. So, but we can always just keep trying, right? Right. Yep. Um, Dave, I'm really glad that you're one of the Daves I know. Do you happen to know Kids in the Hall at all? Uh, I am not that familiar with Kids okay. in the Hall. Okay, they have I a great, my <laughs> they have a great song that goes, these are the Daves I know, I know, these are the Daves I know, and you're one of the Daves I know, so I'm just really happy about that. Um, so I just shared something, but maybe you can share something. I'm asking all my authors if you've got just a little something there you want to share with our viewers. Yeah, and so, um, I mean, it's like sort of more than one thing, yeah. uh, honestly, but they're all related. Um, and they're what I call totems, which are like little tokens of inspiration uh, that I get that have to do with the books that I'm writing. For example, you said you read Granted, right? Yes. Well, there's Ophelia Delphinium Fidgets. I uh, love it. Yeah, so she gets to sit on my desk, right, uh, and, you know, remind me of that book and all the fun I had writing it, uh, and then I wrote a book called The Dungeoneers, um, which is, you know, pretty hardcore fantasy, you know, but it's also funny and uh, has these four uh, dungeon divers who go on all these grand adventures, and I'm also a huge Lego fanatic, right, so I've yes. got the sitting there, and, uh, but it's not just stuff that I've written, you know, I've uh, got all the stories that have inspired me, you know, the things I grew up with, like some of my favorite Homer. Yeah. Uh, and some movies that I happen to adore. Mm -hmm. uh, 
And so I, I keep these things around me and you can see, if you look all the way back there, you can see Edgar Allan Poe and you can see the Death Star and Voltron and all this other stuff. Um, and uh, I think it's important for young authors to realize that the odds of them creating anything that is 100% original are really slim. Right? Yeah, yeah. You're always going to be drawing your inspiration from the sources that you've loved. Uh, and so from the books and the movies and the comic books and the television shows and the stories your grandmother tells you and the conversations you eavesdrop on in the, in the restaurant, like all of these things are going to go inside that sponge of a brain of yours. And then when you go to tell your own story, they're all going to sort of seep and swirl together. And then you put your twist on it, you add your own voice, and it becomes something fresh and new. Uh, and so that's why I would say, you know, for young people out there, keep your eyes and ears open, take in as many of other people's stories as you can. Obviously, read as many books as you can, uh, because then those stories will serve you when you go to write your own stories later. Oh, that's so great. Gosh, Dave, it's been so great talking to you. I really appreciate the interview. And I just wanted to say to everybody, this is your favorite Hoosier Toucan encouraging you to read local. So long, Dave. Bye.